Would you join me in a moment of silence as we remember the folks who've been affected by the shootings at Michigan State University? Thank you. I'll lead us in prayer. Father in heaven, we come to you tonight and we just think of our fellow citizens across our state who have been affected by these things that have happened in the past day in East Lansing. We think of the tragedies even in our own city and surrounding cities over the past week of things that seem so senseless to us. And we're so thankful that uh, you, God, offer grace to all who will come to you. And we just pray, pray you for your grace to be on these families. We thank you for our, our mayor and our city council who lead us and direct us. We pray your blessing on them as they seek you and your wisdom. We think tonight of this meeting where they will discuss things related to those who serve our city as employees. And we're mindful of how grateful we are for so many great employees who serve us and our city. We pray your blessing on them. We pray your blessing on our public safety servants our first responders, keep them safe tonight as they serve us. Thank you for the way that they do that so faithfully. We ask that you would help as this meeting goes forth tonight, that you would give wisdom to each person involved in these discussions. We ask that you would help them to make decisions that would really help our city continue to be a great place to live and learn, to work, worship, and play. We ask that you would do this, God, for your glory, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, Mike, if you'll take the roll call, please. All right. Uh, Councilman Marcos. Here. Councilman Blevins. Here. Councilman Schlack. Present. Councilman Valerius. Here. Councilman Lloyd. Here. Pro Tem Lally. Here. And Mayor McLeod. Here. We have a quorum, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, may I have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Motion, Mayor. Motion by Mr. Schleck. Second. Second by Mr. Lally. Any corrections or changes? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Motion to approve the minutes for the meeting of January 24th. Motion. Motion by Mr. Marcos. Second. Second by Mr. Blevins. Any corrections? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Now a presentation by the fire department. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for having us tonight. And tonight, if you'd uh, feel free to turn around, this is Joe Lally. Joe is Tony's son. Yes. And um, in December, um, Joe was visiting his dad and at his home. Um, Tony began to lose consciousness, and Joe called 911 with his family. And uh, Joe used his first aid and medical skills to uh, respond to his father's uh, uh, losing consciousness. Uh, he's been trained as a police officer and as a corrections officer, and uh, used those skills. He remained calm and performed maneuvers that stimulated Tony's breathing and uh, kept him in a position of safety until the fire department arrived, at which time Joe assisted us in helping his dad and assisted us in getting his dad to, to, uh, to care at the hospital. Um, I want to use this opportunity not only to thank him, but to encourage others to not be afraid to get involved, whether it's your family or, or another citizen. Um, there, are, there are laws that protect you. Um, you can learn first, uh, first aid or, or hands-only CPR or apply a tourniquet to stop bleeding in the event of, of a traumatic injury um, because it happens in an instant when you don't expect it. So if you'd be kind enough then to please join me in uh, thanking Joel Alley for receiving uh, this Citizens Medical Award. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. And I don't know if you want to take a picture with your father or... Or maybe a, yeah, get over it's up yeah. to you. <laughs> I'll be happy to. Okay. <laughs> Mark, do you have a camera handy? Or... Can I have my little granddaughter over here? <laughs>
Thanks. Thank you very much. Organizational business. Good evening, Mayor Council. And once again, I have to follow. <laughs> like you can move me up on the agenda or something. I can't. I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't follow this stuff. Here, here. All right. Um, just wanted to bring a council and the residents up to, up to date on a couple projects we've got going on. This one uh, is not a project, but more information. Uh, went through the. Um, Downriver Community Conference Brownfield Consortium. Uh, we're a member of that group. We've been a member for about 25 years, I guess, 20, I think since the, be since the beginning that we started. And many projects around here uh, throughout the city have been involved. Um, but they offer uh, funding for asbestos abatement, um, environmental assessments such as phase one, phase two, BEAs, hazmat, uh, um, hazmat, hazmat material re um, uh, research and stuff like that. Um, so we've gotten a, a total of uh, 200, uh, over $220,000 in the last, uh, last couple months. That's for the Allen Park Theater. That's about 183000 for asbestos abatement. Uh, Flowers on the Avenue, which is the building we acquired uh, from the Wayne County for back taxes, we received $20,000 for a phase one, phase two, and a BEA hazmat uh, research on that. Uh, the Fumber Dry Cleaners on uh, Park Avenue, the blue building, um, they, that owner uh, received $30,000. Fifteen thousand dollar match into that project um, to get that uh, to get that fifteen thousand, and then the uh, DBA has recently uh, has a buyer for the former gas station at seventeen four ten Ecorse Road uh, for a um, coffee related business there uh, that they're planning, and they're just they just need to do a phase one for the new buyer to be cleared, make sure that everything's it's, it's okay with the site twenty five hundred dollars. I believe that the uh, DBA uh, previously and the Eagle have to a half million dollars tied up in that, part, in that parcel with cleanup because basically they cleaned up the entire site, took all the soil out, brought new soil back in. It was a big project. So, but just a you know, just we go to the meetings actively, we're actively involved. Uh, the DCC Brownfield Group has been very uh, generous uh, to us recently and in the past, and uh, we just want to want to mention that to, to everybody here is that they do a good job for us. Um, community Arena, a uh, community center in the ice arena, they're going to be extremely busy this weekend. Uh, President's Day weekend, we've got tournaments for hockey. I think we got men, uh, boys, I'm going to say men's and women's, men's and women's hockey tournaments. We've got youth basketball going on at the gymnasium, and we've got events going on at the community center. So if you want to go down and actually see the community center at its fullest, uh, what a community center actually uh, represents this weekend is probably going to be the uh, prime example of that. So, uh, Street improvement program, uh, I know it's uh, still, it was sunny out today, a beautiful weather, uh, construction season's right around the corner. And uh, Hard Rock, Concrete is expected to start the reconstruction of Rosedale Boulevard uh, the last week of April or the first week of May, depending on the weather. Um, attached to the uh, packet that I gave the, uh, the council earlier tonight was the letters that we sent out to the residents over on Rosedale and Reek to announce that that project is coming so they can get a, get a heads up when it comes to dealing with the, um, the construction, if they got plans for any summer events and stuff like that, and also for Paris Avenue. Paris Avenue is going to get a water main and a, a street reconstruction. And then um, Reek Road is going to get a water main and a street reconstruction that's from Wick, uh, Wick to Goddard and the uh, Rosedale from Champaign to Southwood. Uh, it's going to be a mess. I apologize now, but uh, those roads, those two roads and Paris are probably uh, definitely needed. Rosedale went down there this morning. It's it's definitely in need of a, uh, a love that we're going to it's going to get here uh, in a few months here. Um, we also met um, last Monday with the Young lady Tiffany Cogswell from uh, from Cabrini. Her item is on the agenda later this evening, and we also met with the Festivities Commission to go over um, the different projects in the, uh, that they they help us so uh, help put on a street fair, and then they also help with the DBA's car show and the Made Michigan Festival. And I just want to let you know uh, there was a little bit of a change on, on how we're going to do that, those events. Is that we're going to do road closures earlier in the morning for those events now, and maybe even the the, uh, the day before. Closing the car show down sometime around uh, I believe two o'clock in the afternoon, maybe no, noon to two somewhere in there, and 
unfortunately, um, people are really set in their ways and going different and, and going a particular way, and they get very belligerent when they can't go that way. And it's not very safe. I think when they were trying to close down either the Maiden Michigan Festival or the street fair last year, they had uh, the safety equipment from the fire department. DPS was, was out there trying to close down the road, and they still had vehicles nearly hitting them. Um, so we're going to go to a much earlier time frame when they feel the traffic's going to get less. Uh, we'll use our social media uh, and, and, and website to make sure that information is getting out. Um, but we just need to make sure that the, the people are safe when they're trying to close these roads down. So they're going to be morning, early morning uh, closures, 7 o'clock in the morning. And then that'll be the day out for a lot of those functions, uh, such as the car show and the Made Michigan. The street fair is actually going to close on Thursday, August 3rd. Seven o'clock. That'll leave uh, the whole day for the DPS to get in there, clean everything up that they need to. The vendors will be able to come in for the normal time, which is late in the afternoon, and they'll be able to start their setup at that point in time. So, um, just want to give you a heads up on that now. So, if, uh, you, so you're aware of it, and if you have any questions, uh, if you come forth, just let me know. Thank you. May I have a motion to accept and file the administrator's report? Motion. Motion by Mr. Lally. Second. Second by Mr. Hilarious. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, we come to public comments. Anyone wishing to come up and speak may do so at this time. You have uh, four minutes. Uh, please provide your name and the street on which you live. We do not want to have your complete address. Thank you very much. Hello, Mayor and City Council. Uh, this is my uh, second time to appear before you. I'm sorry, could I have your name, please? Pardon me, Richard Gadigan, and I'm on the uh, Vietnam Memorial and Beyond Committee. Thank you. Uh, this is my second time appearing before you. The first was uh, the successful catchatory dinner we had back in October. And uh, later this month, uh, the planning committee will resume in its planning. And I wanted to pr uh, come before you and provide you with uh, one, uh, one uh, item that's going to be on our agenda at this meeting, and it's an important one because this is going to be uh, our logo that will represent this memorial. If uh, you would take a look at the three logos that uh, will be presented to the committee, the first one is uh, a logo that we tried to incorporate the city's logo uh, and the items uh, uh, indicating uh, the memorial itself. And I see there was a printing mistake on that one. I just noticed it as well as a grammar mistake earlier. It's all right, we'll use a mirror. I'll, I'll stop there and uh, explain to you what we've incorporated in the, the logos, all right? We have 15 stars that represent the Allen Park KIAs. We have a soldier's cross, and that cross includes a soldier's rifle, boots with helmet on top, and dog tags that are placed on the rifle. The purpose is to show honor, respect, for the dead. This is a practice that started in World War I. The second item, or the third item we incorporated was the American flag. The fourth is the POW, the MIA flag, designed by Newt Hesley for the National League of Families of American Prisoners and Missing in Southeast Asia. Congress approved that flag in 1972. And fifth is the Memorial Wall in uh, District of Columbia, dedicated in 1982. It has 57,939 names, 1,300 which were MIA POWs, 2,654 from the state of Michigan, and 15 from the city of Allen Park. Now, the next two logos that you see that fortunately are in good print, we took from within the city logo, as you see, 
the ego and the surrounding perimeter in the center of your logo and incorporated those items which I just described to you. At our uh, next meeting coming, um, the committee will uh, review these logos and provide any uh, other ideas that they may have in regards to them. This, uh, these logos have been presented to the committee uh, a month or two ago, so there have, some, there have been ideas that have come back to me and what we can do to fine tune it. So that being said, I wanted to uh, make you well aware of our progress in this regard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Tony, I'm glad you're healthy and will continue on the committee. If no one else is coming forward, we will close public comments and move on to the consent agenda. Tonight's consent agenda consists of purchasing actions and finance actions. May I have a motion, please? Motion. Motion by Mr. Lally. Support. Supported by Mr. Blevins. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion is carried. Resolutions. Resolution one is to adopt the MDOT Performance Resolution for Municipalities Regarding Right-of-Ways. May I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Mr. Marcos. Second. Second by Mr. Blevins. Any comments or questions? Somebody would like to explain to us. Yeah, just so it'll allow the uh, DPS uh, Water Department to work within the uh, Michigan Department of Transportation's right-of-way, which is going to be I-94 Southfield, I-75 in the far south end, um, M39, that's it. Just so they can be able to do their uh, yeah. Yeah. Isn't yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at the council meeting. Yeah. No, no. I mean, <laughs> you know, just trying to part the equipment. Why, not that too. <laughs> any, any questions on this? This is standard. Very similar to what we do Agreement. in the county as well. Right. Hearing no questions, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Resolution two is to waive the city bid process as there is no economic benefit and award the Pretty Family Park baseball diamond fence upgrade to Brady Fence Company for a total cost of $16,800 with the city's portion of $10,503.05 coming from account 101751816 from Parks and Recreation and the remaining $6,296.95 to be paid by the Allen Park Public Schools. Motion, please. Motion. Motion by Mr. Schlack, second by Mr. Lally. We're in concert. <laughs> Perfect. It sounded great. Yes. Really? So this is the park for the locals and the lifelongers. It's behind the old North Junior High. It's on Quant at Thomas and Regina. It is a collaboration of efforts between Allen Park Athletic Club, the school district, namely the middle school female softball team that uses it constantly for their games, and Parks and Recreation. We were approached a while back from APAC <clears throat> that asked us to put a fence in there to get approval. And I was just against it a little bit because they just wanted an outfield fence. And I thought an arced fence just out there temporarily or permanently just looked awkward for a ball diamond. So we went after looking for different bids to enclose it completely. Having two access gates, one on each side, in case there is EMS or fire having to get into the ballpark once it is closed. Those would be 10 foot fences on both sides, excuse me, gates on both sides. We went after a few bids and unfortunately we fell into a black hole on some. And I learned just today after talking with Councilman, uh, excuse me, Dan, um, via email, and I contacted four different ones. Kyle Carr had also done two. We didn't hear back from five of them. So in the spirit of timeliness and trying to get things accomplished before the girls' softball season and APAC season starts, we had to go back to Brady Fence, who did a repair there about uh, early January to repair the backstop. After we had redone APAC, uh, had done the diamond regrading, and we re replaced all the, um, the dugouts. So we felt this was the best idea 
to enclose the entire property, make it look like a ballpark. If we're gonna spend that kind of money, let's dress it up and not just have an arch out in the middle of it with a, just a fence. So this is why we've come to you today to ask you to waive the bid because there's really no economic relief for us because we haven't heard from anybody. Um, what a surprise, right? Um, it's kind of a shame because we did contact other vendors who have done work for us before in the city. So Brady Fence came highly recommended even from Matt Baker at the depart uh, building department. And we feel very confident in this, this particular company. They've done a lot of residential um, projects, including uh, several of our employees at the community center have had great success with them as well. So I'm just asking for the approval today to get that accomplished so we can have it ready for the uh, season. Start to finish is probably about a 10 day process. Um, I couldn't tell you a start date just based on that once we can communicate with Brady Fence once and if you approve the, uh, the resolution. Thank you. Any uh, questions from council? Brady Fence did my last seven hours. All right. Familiar with them. If they keep winning, they're going to need a bigger stadium. Cool. Yeah. You hope. Okay. I like you're doing a good job. Thank you, sir. Very we have a great staff and great support. Thank you. No other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is carried. Thank you. Resolution three, thank you, is to um, concur with the recommendation of the city administrator and approve the road closure request from St. Francis Cabrini Church for Wick Road from Lawrence to Ruth with the four additional safety items for their annual festival on June 9, 10, and 11, 2023. Motion. Motion. Supported by Mr. Lloyd. Supported by Mr. Schlack. Comments or questions? Let me through the chair. Uh, so we met uh, last uh, Monday with uh, Tiffany Cogswell. She's the uh, chairwoman for the event for Cabrini. Um, been very helpful working with her the last couple of years um, and, and very accommodating for the city's uh, request. All the department heads uh, were, were there to uh, uh, go over all the items and concerns. Um, so again, uh, just highlight what they're what, uh, it's gonna be asking to be approved. Those four main safety concerns were the closure of Wick Road between Lawrence Avenue and Ruth Avenue with Waterfield Jersey barriers at Lawrence and Wick and the second, uh, in the second turnaround on Wick. She did ask uh, uh, about allowing some parking in that area and it was a um, resounding no from, uh, from public safety. Um, concern of, of people getting in there that uh, they're trying to do the drop off uh, location for the, uh, the people and having cars and then people not, because there's not enough parking. Uh, it just could be created a bigger issue than it she understood that and, and accepts that. Uh, no parking on the west side of Lawrence Avenue between Wick Road and Moore Road to allow uh, for two-way traffic. We instituted this last year, no issue. Uh, actually worked very well. She said that the neighbors uh, actually liked it better because they could actually get in and out of their driveways and get a little bit of ease, uh, more ease than they had in the past. Uh, finally, uh, the last two, a uh, snow fence down the center of the Wick Road medians to keep them uh, from being destroyed by foot traffic. I believe they actually went around last year and they're working on another traffic off the island so they don't get torn up uh, during the, the kids going back and forth, which we understand is going to happen. We just don't want the grass to be all torn up over there. Um, so she's going to make sure that they accommodate that. Her husband uh, is a wonderful uh, man. He, he, he volunteered for this position, mm -hmm. and uh, he, does, he does a great job for her, and so we appreciate him. And then finally, the presence of two police officers during the Friday and Saturday evening hours of the festival, that was approved. Um, uh, that request was uh, granted again. I do want to let you know that the PD uh, is going to come back with a second proposal to Cabrini about the possibility of having a officer, two officers there for the entire event from start to finish. Um, we need to get a, a proposal over to Tiffany so she can get it to, to her committee to, to either approve it or, or, or not. But uh, we don't want that to be the, uh, the, the any issue with this. Uh, we're satisfied with these. If they can add that uh, additional time, it would be great, but it won't have any bearing. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? You? Resolution four from the local officers compensation board recommends that the salary of the council be set at $5,500 per year for the next four years. Motion. Motion. Motion by Mr. Lally. Second. Second by Mr. Lloyd. Um, Comments or questions? Perhaps fill in. If I could, uh, just real quick, the current salary of the council is set at $5,000. Um, and they uh, did uh, 
her recommendation was to bump it up five hundred dollars to almost eleven per year uh, for the next four years. Uh, real quick, the way that the uh, commission works, they can only meet in the odd year. They have to meet before the election process. If you recall back in twenty nineteen, we were very close to October in October. Uh, we wanted to kind of get this out ahead of time because uh, one of the one of the recommendations they had is that there's a change from what it was in the past. We want to make sure when we're doing formal petitions or run for office, they're clearly understanding what what we're doing is the same for any of the salaries for the regular council and the mayor as well. So that 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 would be for all of them, but uh, for this one on this end here, uh, five thousand dollars is the current salary for the eleven year district. Yeah. Um, my quick comment is that based on I see the increases. I'm going to vote how I vote. Uh, nonetheless, I feel that the um, additional raise could be used and save that money for something else, for some other maybe piece of equipment or something on this point, and not have that additional raise put in there. So that's, that's how I'm going to be voting. And I just wanted to clarify that before the vote was taken. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, Mr. Light. Uh, I was just going to ask, uh, uh, just to, to, to clarify, this may be where you're going, this applies for next council, that not is the correct. current council. That is correct. It does not. That, that's the whole point that it has to be done before nothing changes, including for treasurer or the clerk until the next elections. Thank you. Um, and that's the whole point of having the local compensation board, which is an independent organization, but it does not apply to us. The November 2023 20, changes. Yeah. After the election. There's no further questions. Take a vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. No. Aye. 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 Uh, I think we should do a roll call, Mike. All right. <clears throat> I have a motion by Pro Tem Lolly, supported by Councilman Lloyd, to um, approve the recommendation of the salary from the local officers' compensation board that the salary of the city council be set at 5,500 per year for the next four years. Uh, Councilman Blavins. No. Councilman Lally. No. Councilman Lloyd. Yes. Councilman Marcos. No. Mayor McLeod. Yes. Councilman Schlack. No. And Councilman Valeris. Yes. Back up with fractions. What's that? Back up with fractions. Well, you know, we probably have some on the fractions. <laughs> <laughs> It passes. Correct? So it's adopted. Resolution 5, also from the Local Com Officers Compensation Board, to recommend that the salary of the city clerk increase 3% per year for the next four years. Motion. Motion. Motion by Mr. Valerius. Second. Second by Mr. Lloyd. Comments or questions? A comment again through the chair? Yes. On this one regarding the clerk, considering that uh, it's a percentage and not a monetary fundraise, and based on my, like the private sector, I think that's comparable and fair. Uh, so that's my comment on that. Can I read through the chair? Yes. The board, um, I sit with. I sit kind of as a quasi, quasi liaison or, or, or assist with them from the administration side. Um, their uh, consideration on this was uh, to look at what the uh, what the expected salary increases for the uh, for the union uh, members are for the next uh, four years. Uh, we based it on the uh, fire contract. We gave them that information, and then they were they they can change it from that. And they did modify it from that. And we, we, I think the uh, next four years. We project out 11 percent. They went to 12 percent. They just changed the percentages around from a, a different amount of money. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
resolution as passed. Resolution six from the local officers compensation board to recommend that the salary of the treasurer be set at 17,000 per year for the next four years. Motion. Motion. Motion by Mr. Marcos. Second. Second by Mr. Lally. Questions or comments? Comment for the chair. Yes. Uh, again, with this one being that we're dropping such from one to another, I feel that I uh, want more. I don't feel that there's enough answered within the packet, so I'm going to, that's my comment. Okay. I mean, for the chair. Yes. The board, uh, the um, board compensation board looked at the, uh, <coughs> the position, uh, the, the, actually the treasurer was there in attendance as well, and they were able to ask uh, the treasurer uh, the amount of hours that uh, is being put in now. There were some changes uh, in the, uh, the staffing uh, within the department that moved those uh, the full-time position that was relocated to um, another another department. Two part-time people were hired, and, uh, and that those uh, changes moved that position under the uh, finance director's um, uh, purview. Um, the treasurer was able to share with us that. Puts in an average of 15 to 20 hours, depending on the type of the cycle. More often, it's closer to 15, and then during the beginning times, maybe it'll be a little bit over that. And that's what the uh, compensation board was looking at. They were trying to come up with a salary that was conducive to the amount of hours put in, and that's why they suggested the, the rate of 17,000. If I could, one more comment is that we also discussed in our session prior that we were on Claire currently if. Uh, this position uh, had benefits, and we did not know the answer at that time either. That, and that would be my final comment on that. Correct. That is nothing that is under our purview, under, under the purview Correct. of the local compensation board. And to make it clear that board uh, is appointed, uh, they serve seven-year terms. Um, they're not all uh, on it for the at the same length of time, they're staggered, so there's some newer members and older members. And um, the only person from the city that sits in there is the city administrator. And as he indicated, um, the treasurer herself was there as a, a, a resource, so they were able to ask her uh, many, many questions. So um, a very fine group of people from what I'm told. So. There's no further questions. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Take a roll call, Mike. <clears throat> okay. I have a motion by Councilman Marco, supported by Pro Tem Lolly, for the um, resolution from the Local Officers Compensation Board to recommend that the salary of the treasurer be set at seventeen thousand per year for the next four years. Um, Pro Tem Lolly. No. Councilman Lloyd? Yes. Councilman Marcos? Yes. Mayor McLeod? Yes. Councilman Schlack? No. Councilman Valerius? Yes. And Councilman Blevin? No. Okay, so we have one, two, three no's. Four things up. It passes. Yeah. But you need to reject the five people. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it goes through. Yeah, I'm just bad. Which, it's, it's protected that way for political mm -hmm. reasons. Right. Sure. I mean, no offense, but I'm sure none, and I, I don't vote on my raise, but no one wants to vote on their raise. So now that it's over, it has been since 1999 since you guys got one. So anyway, I'm out of order. <laughs> well, but, but you're assuming guard. that everyone sitting up here is going to be sitting up here after November. <laughs> yeah. <That's> be presumptuous. <laughs> Resolution 7. 
from the local officers' compensation board to recommend that the salary of mayor be set at thirteen thousand two hundred per year for the next four years. Motion. Motion. Motion by Mr. Lally. Second. Second by Mr. Valerius. Comments or questions? <laughs> my a comment that I had with uh, the compensation for city council is still staying for, for the mayor. I mean, to the chair, the, the committee with the commission uh, was looking at the, um, the same thing that they did with the council with the 10% increase. Um, so the budget said there had been not an increase uh, in a number of years. The only increase I was aware of that was actually a reinstatement back in 2013. And that restored, restored the re wages back to the, the salary of the Any other comments or questions? If I may, uh, you know, even though <clears throat> we, we, this is a part-time position, I know that uh, everybody here puts in more than what would be considered a part-time job, especially with all the committees and everything they're on. Um, and, and the mayor is by far no exception, puts in more time than all of us put together. He, I, I, I'm not saying I have no, <laughs> no problem with it at all. I, I voted no against us because uh, I look at our job differently. Um, we don't have the responsibility of the mayor. We have responsibility. We all answer to her. Um, but I think more of we do this for the love of the city more than anything. So that's my opinion. Thank you, uh, Dennis. Um, I'm going to say something on your behalf because I think people need to know um, that everyone here the work involves more than two meetings a month. Um, there are a number of subcommittees for the council that members sit on more than one subcommittee. Some meet more regularly than others. A lot of time is consumed. They are also um, liaisons with various boards and commissions and attend those meetings. Um, so there's a, a lot of time spent, like, um, Every other position in this city, it has changed since the charter was written. Um, and I can tell you that when I look at my predecessor and the number of meetings he attended and I shadowed him at, um, you have day meetings, you have night meetings. Uh, so I can tell the residents of this city that you are getting more than your money's worth uh, from the individuals who sit up here. And uh, I won't even mention the fact that they're all available to you 24-7. I just want to make one comment about this. When I first ran for office, uh, was it 2008, 2007, I never expected to be paid for a volunteer job like we do. And after I got the money for it, that's not bad because we do a lot of work and the mayor does more work. And I, uh, I'm all for that. Okay. Any further comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. One no. <laughs> Resolution has passed. Resolution 8, to accept the 2021 assistance to firefighters grant for self-contained breathing apparatus. Motion. Motion by Mr. Lally. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Polaris. I'm sorry. Valerius. He's changing Turn on the mic. Voice. <laughs> both. Motion right by Mr. Valerius, second by Mr. Marcos. Okay. Okay, I'm thank you. <laughs> Good evening again. Just a brief explanation of what we're requesting. Um, so we hosted a regional grant uh, with ourselves and Lincoln Park uh, for the additional self-contained breathing apparatus that we did not receive on the grant that we previously accepted from the larger Downriver uh, regional grant. FEMA had cut the award in half. 
which is becoming relatively common on what we ask for. So we received some very nice brand new MSA SCBAs or self-contained breathing apparatus. That is the mask, backpack, and bottle combination that allows us to go into atmospheres that are hot and smoky and breathe well. Um, and so this will allow us to put new SCBAs into service by getting enough of them, which will allow us to populate them on the trucks. Right now we've just been drilling with them and practicing with them, but they're not in service. We're still using our old ISIs, which are getting older and no longer have the parts available to maintain and repair. The award was for $122,727 between ourselves and Lincoln Park. The matching is 10%, which is approximately $6,136 for our portion because we are splitting this. There will be no grant writing fee as Carrie Thompson wrote this grant for us at no charge. Carrie is not only a fabulous grant writer and a Royal Oak Fire Captain, but is, as you might recall, the leader of our high school cadet program at William D. Ford Academy as well. Um, the money is currently in the capital account and is budgeted for it. Clerk Mizzy, I can give you the account number should you need that for the record. And we have until the end of the month to accept this grant. Any questions? I always find it odd that we have to approve somebody giving us money. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a 10% matching fee, and well, I'll, I will I tell you that the, <laughs> the work afterward is, is extensive uh, to maintain a grant. So there is that, but nonetheless, it does need an approval from the council and the mayor. And I think that has to do with the grant money, spending money, but you're right. Anytime you get a, the grant to offset most of the cost, it's like, show me. Yeah. Any comments or questions? Good. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. The resolution is passed. Resolution 9. I'm going to have Mr. Can uh, Chief Canagan um, to authorize the fire chief to apply for the 2023 AFG grant for various tools in the amount of $24,330 with a 10% match that will come from their capital funds. Motion, please. Motion, Mayor. Motion by Mr. Schlack. Second. Second by Mr. Blevins. Chief. Thank you, ma'am. So, uh, sure. To answer the question that Councilman Marcos reason why we now are bringing these forth because uh, we don't want to get into a situation where the, we apply for a grant, we receive a grant, and let's say the match is a, super, a larger number than what somebody has in their budget. I mean, I don't want to put that into a position of the council having to you know, be pitted against the other departments or anything like that. We're trying to find that money. Um, I mean, we're watching one from afar. So you're, you'll see uh, you'll see the grant applications. I'm trying, I'm trying to make sure we get those before you. So uh, Chief Can is the first one. I'll have block grant next week or, or two weeks, and just so you have those, so you're aware of them because there is a match there. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, but the match is it's so well worth it. Right? As long as we well, got money in the budget. <laughs> I, I usually we, we hit the, the issue we would have had is in another uh, department uh, in recreation. Um, the council was. Have a grant in 5050 match. The grant would have been three hundred fifty to three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, and there was no budget for that. So that's that's the problem. Uh, Amanda gets a little, a little uh, upset when we don't have an account number to give her. Well, that's a lot of you know. Yeah, and, and we don't want to run into that situation. So that's why we're yeah. so sorry, sorry, Jay. My pleasure. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> So uh, we are uh, asking you to authorize <laughs> to apply for this grant, and this is going to be a downriver regional small engine grant that's being hosted by Wyandotte, so that part takes the pressure off us and following up on the, the grant paperwork. Um, and, and FEMA and AFG tend to, the, the, the uh, AFG is FEMA's grant for the Assistance to Firefighters grant, that's the acronym, uh, tend to award regional grants more freely because they like regionalization and cost sharing, standardization across mutual aid partners. Um, so asking for you to authorize us to purchase two electric PPV or positive pressure ventilation fans, as well as two more sets of battery powered Milwaukee tools. As you might recall, we are working on a green initiative to move toward all battery powered tools and all battery powered fans on all of our engines. 
Um, it uh, will allow us to remove two types of gasoline, both the two cycle and four cycle that we carry on our engines, and there'll be less maintenance and repair. They're more lightweight. Um, and eventually, this and the other initiatives that will allow us to go to batteries would allow us to not have a generator on our next engine purchase, which could save many thousands of dollars, probably 10 or 20, because anything you add to a fire engine is going to drive the price way up. Um, so this would also have a 10% match, only approximately $2,433. And the grant fee is about $1,300 because it's being written by a different individual for the group. And that would come out of next year's capital budget. Okay. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution is passed. Resolution 10, to authorize the fire chief to apply for the 2023 AFG grant for two thermal imaging cameras and one set of battery-powered extrication equipment in the amount of $70,000 with a 10% match that will come from their capital funds. Motion. Motion. Motion by Mr. Lally. Second. Second by Mr. Valerius. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <laughs> um, and finally, this grant would be exclusive Allen Park, again, written by our friend Kerry Thompson, so there's going to be no grant fee. And uh, one of the disadvantages, the few disadvantages of a regional grant is that there are limits, and so if you have five cities in there, that tends to reduce the amount of dollars everybody gets to share. And then you do lose some control over the brand name that you choose to have or how the specs are written. If you want a certain product, you, again, have to dilute it with different votes from different fire chiefs and departments. So this grant will be exclusive for Allen Park, and it is for two thermal imaging cameras and one set of battery-powered extrication tools, or the Jaws of Life set that you're familiar with. Um, we have two thermal imaging cameras now. Those are the ones that can see heat, locate uh, victims in smoke and locate where heat's at for a fire. Our newest one has a cracked screen from a fire damage, but it still works. And the second one is very old, about 10 or 15 years old, and that's very old in this technology. So we're looking to replace both of them. And we would save the old ones and move them onto the rescues for backup cameras. Not, not backing up cameras, but back, secondary cameras. And uh, the Jaws of Life, we have one set of battery-powered Jaws now. They work very, very well. You don't have to have hoses attached. Again, this is a green initiative because it allows us not to have a gasoline-powered hydraulic pump on the engine attached to hoses, which is currently what we're using on our backup engine or our second due engine. And our second due engine right now is our first due engine because our first due engine is getting a transmission repair in Detroit. So... The reason we duplicate these things is so that we can use them at a moment's notice in an emergency, even if it's our second due or, or oldest engine. So that's what we're asking for today. The grant matching amount would be approximately $7,500, and it would be out of next year's capital. Thank you. Any comments or questions? I just want to make one comment, Chief. This Jaws of Life is always electrical, you know, battery-operated equipment. You have to keep charge. Yes, sir. Uh, Sergeant Stetz created a charging station for all of our battery-powered things that is right next to the engine. The engineers check the batteries daily. There are two or three stored on each engine for each tool. And in the event that they don't work, they have this cool gizmo where you plug in it like a battery and currently attach it to our generator if you're on an, a long-term extrication so we can end up getting juice from our generator currently. Huh. Very good. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution has Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. Thank you. Now we come to uh, council comments in this evening. Um, we're going to start off with Councilman Valerius. Uh, just wanted to start. I know he's gone already, but I wanted to thank your son, Joe, for everything he did for you that evening, as well as assisting the uh, med emergency medical personnel. Uh, mean a lot to me, so his actions... Awesome. Glad he was here to be recognized. So, uh, I want to thank, uh, as always, all city employees, uh, all city directors, supervisors, commission members, everyone that works hard for the citizens of Allen Park. And last, uh, in closing, uh, a couple days ago I saw a posting on social media, uh, and I'm sure 
Chief Can in the fire department, as well as the other EMTs in the police department, uh, were aware of this call that came out about a pedestrian vehicle accident that took place at Pelham and Champaign. Uh, it was about a day or so after that event that I saw posted that I found out that the 63-year-old female who was killed in that accident was a very good close friend of my wife and I, whose youngest son actually graduated with my son, and they were friends since second grade. Uh, when he graduated in 2018. Uh, his old, her oldest son was also a student of mine at Cabrini uh, as well. Uh, she celebrated her 63rd birthday on January 4th. Uh, Annette Seesock was an RN with the Henry Ford Health System. She was an amazing mother and friend who will be greatly missed. I ask that you keep her sons, Alex and Max, in your prayers. Um, Councilman Thank you, Mayor. I also want to start by saying congrats to Joel Lally. I got I know him quite well, uh, being a fellow uh, Knights of Columbus, plus being colleagues with his father. So I know he's well deserving of that award and helped Tony out greatly. I also want to wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day, especially my wife Bridget at home, and it's President's Day that will come before uh, we meet again. Uh, I want to take a time to reflect on that this month is Black History Month to look at all the achievements from the African American community. And finally, but not least, uh, the event that happened last night. Uh, I often wear a tie to demonstrate kind of what I'm feeling. I am um, as the only Spartan grad up here. Um, this one hurt a little tough, a little harder. Uh, I'm an Army veteran, so I'm not. I don't want to hear anyone say um, anti-Second Amendment or anything like that nature that comes out of the woodwork every time something happens like this. But the truth is, uh, I want to send deepest condolences to the MSU community and definitely the first responders that were from the university police, the local police, the, the, uh, the Fed even was out there helping. But we in the United States do not have to live like this. Enough is enough. I've said this before. I'm not going to say we just need thoughts and prayers. Prayers always need it, no matter what part of our life. But action without action, doing something, without policy, is simply inaction. We need to do something. You know, some people might say mental health. Well, yeah, we need that too. Let's fund that. Let's fund it all. But yet, we sit on our hands. Let's look at red flag laws. This gentleman had a prior gun charge. Let's look at universal background checks. You know, in the state of Michigan, they're only, it's, it's very limited of what we can do with background checks. We have a, quite a few loopholes within our state. And again, I, I've told you I'm an Army vet. I serve in the United States Infantry, and I learned a great deal about a lot of firearms. And I, I say it's enough to end these assault style weapons. Style. I said style specifically because I know Gun advocates will get down my neck and I might have to hear in this. And honestly, I don't care anymore. Enough is enough. How many more people need to die? You know, I look at my sons when I wake up in the morning and what am I going to raise them till they're 18 years old and send them to school and then come back and say, oh, or even worse yet, I heard a child speaking on the news saying, we went through drills like this in high school, but I never thought it would happen when I got to college. Are you kidding me? Enough is enough. I yield. Councilman Blevins. Well, first off, I don't think the groundhog was right with the winter for six more months, thinking the weather outside. Um, sorry, Matthew, because I know you love winter so much. Um, <laughs> uh, first off, uh, uh, oh, uh, also words. Uh, please make sure you're supporting your local businesses because they're the glue of the city. This Friday, um, there's uh, the Difference Nutrition, which is uh, right by the uh, uh, Tattoo Marshall Music around over there. Um, they are having a, another grand opening with new owners, uh, and so they'll be having a ribbon cutting. Uh, I believe six o'clock uh, on Friday, this upcoming Friday. 
Um, if you want to know why, how I vote and all that stuff, you can always come up to me and I, I'll let you know personally. Um, I, I, I personally, it, the one thing really though with the treasurer one is the residents voted like three to one at the last, to have a, to be a elected position. And we always talk about we need qualified people and I just don't think that amount is enough, but other than that, but again, I've heard all the reasons for others about why, but again, that's just my two cents on that one. But uh, just uh, again, try to stay optimistic, positive, think about your neighbors, help one another. Like um, Councilman like there's so much going on in this world and down in Ohio with trains and then again, it's just, um, it's just one of those things that, again, you don't know what is going on in everyone's personal lives. So just, again, it's Valentine's Day. Love one another. Um, to students, uh, keep up good work with high school. And please make sure you, after high school, come back and support uh, uh, local government. Because maybe one day, again, like if you turn 18, you can, run for office and be up here just like me. Um, but, uh, and like in the past that we uh, discussed that, yes, this isn't just a two meeting job. Like the mayor said, it's a full, I consider it a full-time job. I get calls at two in the morning while I'm at work and all that stuff. Sometimes I get emails. Um, and then again, with being on, uh, being liaisons, so I probably, Say I'm go to maybe six meetings a month, but I love it. I love representing because um, I want to represent the city in a positive way. So, and that's why again, it's not for the money. It's like gas money, pretty much. But it's just, uh, but it's just, just think about that for this year. And again, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of Valentine's Day, and God bless and stay positive. And I yield. Councilman yep. Marcos. Where's all your students? It's the first one of the semester. So they're not mine. Oh. <laughs> These guys are getting ahead of the game. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, where's the crowd? I missed the, miss the kids. I don't know. Get ahead of the game. Yeah. That's um, <laughs> I did. Is, is uh, Richard still here? I thought that the one of them was still here. I, I just wanted to take half of one and put it on half of the other one. Oh. Take that top half of the middle one. Put it to the top half of the, the one on the right. Cover that. Huh. That was my my thing. On that. Anyhow. You do that to us. We'll, we'll pass. We meet with the next one. Okay. It's going to be a long arrow on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to thank Chief Ken uh, for always uh, getting uh, getting the money when we need it and getting the stuff we need to take care of the citizens. Uh, they do a great job. Please fire Chief Ken all these grants. And I know they're tough. And uh, I know how hard it is, and getting someone to do the work to get them is even, even better. Uh, it's, that's a, it's a bonus. Um, other than that, uh, I just wanted to, to mention I've got a, a fella uh, that I've known for about the last 20 years. His name is Rick Rick Folks. He um, he lives in Allen Park. He's he does lawn maintenance. He does snow removal. Um, he started. I met him when uh, he was doing my father's back in the early 2000s, so I've known him for over 20 years. Uh, if anybody needs uh, a lawn service or snow removal service, contact me through the city email. I'll give you his phone number. He's got about 170 customers, and this guy has never missed a date, never missed a time. He is so, he's in, the guy's incredible, plus he works a full-time job, so I don't know how he does it. But I wanted to put that out for him because he's such a good guy. We've got, our neighborhood's got fairly elderly people, oh, even older than me, um, and he takes care of everybody. The guy's amazing. He's got his daughters working for him. They're both high school uh, girls here in Allen Park, and uh, they, they, do a, they just do a fantastic job. So I wanted to bring that up. Um, so again, if you want to get his number, I got it, but contact me through uh, email uh, on the city website. I'll be happy to give it to you. And uh, last of all, um, since we've had all these 
things flying around the, the country, I just wanted you to know that it's Extraterrestrial Cultural Day. Oh. <laughs> They're shooting them down. So we're not, we're not going to get to learn some of their cultures. With that, I yield. Good night. <laughs> Councilman Lolly. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I really want to thank my son for what he did that day. He did save my life. They wanna, I, when I got to St. Peter's Gate, he says, what are you doing here? You still got a lot of work to do. You better get your butt down and back again. And I really, that's a joke, but that's probably the best thing I can explain it. And uh, I, I love my son and my family. I want to thank him very much. That's one. Most of all, and the, uh, the MSU incident, like Councilman Slack said, that was terrible. This world is going crazy. Every, t every day there's something going on. Somebody's dying here and there. That's, that's too much. Uh, I just want to pray for them. Just remember there's three of them that died and five are still in the hospital. Let's pray for them, for their recovery and the families and all the students at MSU. My daughter went there, graduated from there. And uh, everybody else said what I have to say. I healed that day. Thank you. Councilman Lloyd. Um, I again, uh, like my fellow council members, want to echo my appreciation for Joe Lolly um, because uh, Tony means great deal to all of us and to the city, um, and he did us a tremendous service. Um, and to echo Chief um, Can's uh, message with that and the importance of getting first aid and CPR certified, um, because um, talk to any first responder, when you get into those situations, um, seconds matter, minutes matter. And so um, being able to uh, do that can save somebody's life um, that is that is deeply important. Um, as far as tonight's vote, I would just want to vote uh, warn any potential candidates that if you are planning on running for city council for fifty five hundred dollars, that you should please not do that. Okay, it is. <laughs> it, it, it will be a very sorry um, investment of your of your time if that is what you're hoping to yield from it. Um, I. Uh, as everybody up here mentioned, um, there is there's many things that go into this. Um, you know, all the things that were mentioned, and, and just the mere fact that when you have a, a a citizen that's upset about something, you owe that individual the responsibility to give them the time to to hear about what they're upset about and to do something about it if you can. Um, I I think I I echo um, Councilman Blevins' uh, sentiment that we are that no one up here does it for the money, um, and. I think that it's important to, to note that anything that we do up here, all these resolutions, all of these um, uh, um, ordinances that we pass when we do them, we're, we're not doing them for, for today. We're, we're doing it so that for, for the future, we're planting these seeds down the future. And, and again, I, I think that it's a, um, nobody does it for the money, uh, but as uh, Clerk Mizzy pointed out, it hasn't happened since 1990. And it probably hasn't happened for very good reason, is because I think that as a, I feel deeply comfortable. This won't affect me unless I have the good fortune to being um, reelected. But it's just a deeply uncomfortable thing, and and that's why it's designed the way that it is. And that's I also think why it's designed in state law to have two thirds um, uh, to be able to to remove it, because I think that you probably see something that that happened here tonight play out um, across the country. Uh, and, and as I've said, I'm sorry, excuse me, across the state. Uh, and as I've said before, you know, I think it's important that we entrust this commission with making this decision. Um, you know, we went through the list of all the individuals that are on the compensation committee. Um, and I trust them all to be competent, intelligent people that arrived upon that decision uh, not lightly. Um, so just um, a small bit in way as to why um, why I voted the way that I did, something that I believe I vote um, owe to our constituents. Um, finally, uh, uh, I'm just deeply saddened today. Uh, and I'm angry as well. And I echo, I 100% agree with everything that Ms. Uh, Councilman Schlack said. 
think things need to be done. Um, unfortunately, in, in this country, it has become far too normal to hear the news that this has happened. Um, I, I don't know about uh, Councilman Valerius, but I spent most of the day kind of catching up with uh, siblings of former students that had, had gone on to Michigan State by checking in with other teachers. Have you heard from this person? Have you heard from this person? Um, just, just making sure, because it's, it's probably one of the, the schools that we send the most students to. Um, one of the people that I uh, texted last night when I first heard the news was my um, nephew, who was sheltering in place in his dorm at Michigan State University. And he is safe, and his friends are safe. But I think as we can all understand that this is a, um, a deeply unnerving event to live through. And no young person who leaves their house to go get an education should have to be exposed to that. Um, and that's it. I'm just sad that I want it to end, and I think that everybody here needs to do everything in their power to make that happen. And I yield. Thank you. Mike, would you uh, sure make any comments? Well, I'm not too proud. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for the resolution on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, um, I just want to make this, I want to recognize uh, Jacob Nitz out there from Boy Scout Troop 1061. He is here working on a merit badge called Citizenship in the Community, which requires them to come in, watch a local council meeting, and uh, report on an issue that's going on in the city. So out of everything bad, let's, I'm going to point out something good. Jake, Jake's been in it since he was a little guy, so. <laughs> Um, with that, thank you all for coming out. God bless you and good night. Thank you, Mike. Um, we got a few things. Uh, yes, do keep in mind that even though we're halfway through it, this is Black History Month, and I think it behooves all of us to uh, educate ourselves, um, visit a museum, uh, read some books, talk to friends. Uh, same holds true for visiting museums like the Holocaust Museum. Um, we, uh, we need to delve into our history to truly understand what's happening in this country. Um, I've been thinking a lot about uh, last night because I was watching the Red Wings hockey and I happened to look at my Facebook page and I saw a friend of mine who posted, this is a text no mother wants to get, and I quickly found out what was going on. Uh, her daughter's up there, and then I got to thinking about my neighbor next door and the one across the street who have children at Michigan State and um, my son-in-law's brother and his wife whose daughter is there and probably so many others that I forgot. Um, and then the story unfolded and I, I did some more reading today. Um, and I just had a number of things that crossed my mind. I know sometimes we sit here and say, you know, please come to meetings, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, we put out information, and um, this is kind of going to be a, a mashup of things. Uh, and I got to looking at what happened last night and the individual involved, and you read about the background and a felon and a felon in possession of a, of a firearm. And um, you read that Michigan has probably some of the weakest gun laws, but you separate the fact that uh, we can strengthen our gun laws um, to ensure that guns do not go into the hands of, of individuals that should not possess them. But the fact remains that this felon did not go out and purchase this gun from a gun shop. He got it on the black market. And no law is going to prevent that. But I will tell you what will prevent it. And I know that there's a couple of department heads here who already heard me on this subject today, but you're going to hear me again tonight because I'm not only sad, but I'm furious. I'm furious because what we need people to do is pay attention. So you read the article that a felon had a gun. A man who lived with his parents, who was devastated when his mother passed away two years ago, whose father he lived with, 
in the same house who knew that his son was suffering from depression, who knew that his son, who was a felon, was in possession of a firearm and did nothing. You hear about the neighbor who said he would go out into the yard and practice shoot in the backyard. If you had a neighbor in Allen Park who went to their yard and shot off a gun, what would you do? You would call the police. But these people did nothing. His father did nothing. The neighbor who did nothing, all they had to do was pay attention. And I am furious because probably three people would not be dead and five more clinging to life if someone had paid attention and done something. And with that, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Lally. Second, Second by Mr. Lloyd. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned at 7-11. Thank you.